after the construction, after the improvements. Um, in regards to jobs, it, it, I've stood here in the past and you know, we, we, we've done many projects in the Flint community. Smith Village, the Kettering University Gateway. I'm just, I'm gonna wait till this little short meeting gets over. And then the uh, KW uh, Water Authority. You know, Smith Village, if you recall, that was promise, a promise of many jobs for the Flint community and we saw those homes manufactured outside of Flint, outside of Genesee County, outside of the state of Michigan, and uh, at least they were made in the United States, I guess, and then they were brought in here to Flint. The Kettering uh, University, the, the gateway there, uh, they wouldn't even hire local residents to cut down the trees along that gateway. They, they had to get a company again, from outside of the state of Michigan to do that. Uh, the K. Downey Water Authority, that's a promise of, I believe it was 75% of the jobs would come from within the district, but the problem with that is the district includes Flint, City of Flint, City of Lapeer, Lapeer County, Sanilac County, and Genesee County. So I, you know, I really don't foresee very many 18-year-olds from the north side of Flint being hired to dig a ditch, to lay pipeline in Lapeer County somewhere. I, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't think that's going to happen. Now, you know, the abatements we've heard tonight that some people believe that the abatements will attract businesses. And, you know, I would follow along that argument in, in some situations. I mean, if you wanted to build a, any type of business in, in the middle of the desert, you might need to offer some type of abatement for a company to move there. Uh, but in this case, this evening, we're talking about a fixed building location, the Capitol Theater. Now, if this abatement is denied, I do not believe for one minute that the Capitol Theater will be moved somewhere else to another community where they're being offered an abatement. I, I mean, it's not going to happen. The Capitol Theater will not be picked up and moved to another community. So sometimes in the, the realm of possibilities in regards to an abatement, one must ask, a community must ask, do we have something that people will move here or stay here irregardless of an abatement that's offered from another community? And I think in this case we do. It's the location. It's the fixed, let me call it a permanent asset. The Capitol Theater is not moving. It's not like having to lure General Motors or Toyota Motor Company to Flint, Michigan. Because Toyota and General Motors, quite frankly, could move nearly anywhere in the world and run their operations. Now, the abatement might help attract General Motors. The Capitol Theater is already here. So there's no real need for the abatement. I believe there, there, there could very well be things going on other than just the application. And, and by that I mean it's been reported in the Flint Journal that one of the uptowns had, let me say, their hand in this project. I could be completely wrong, but that's what was reported in our local paper, the Flint Journal. So my questions would be, again, is it transferable? What will the new taxes be? What would they be without abatement? What's the value of that property today? And what will it be after uh, completion of the project? Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Quincy?
Good evening. My name is Quincy Murphy, and um, I got here a little late tonight, but um, a 12-year tax abatement for the um, Genesee, I mean the um, Capitol Theater. I've been coming to city council for some years, and I don't seen a lot of different businesses get tax abatement. And I just left a meeting before I came here. That's why I came here late. And I just want to show you guys something. This is a um, symbol of we having a March Wednesday. We're trying to reopen Bunch School to a community center. And one of our problems that we are having is financial trying to get funding to get the facility back open. It costs 100000 just to pay for the utilities. And with all the taxes that we will have to be paying for a bunch school, it's going to be a big struggle for us, especially as being a minority. So my thing to you guys is, are we just focusing on um, tax abatement for downtown Flint, or are we want to be equitable in where we um, diversify our tax abatement? Now, I'm not saying nothing is wrong with giving the Capitol Theater um, a tax abatement. Um, we already gave away the Genesee Tower for a dollar and gave them, what, $800,000 of community development block grant funds to help tear it down. If you'd have took 100000 out of the 800000 and gave it to us, that would have helped us pay for bunch for a year and maybe we could have had some minority businesses to build some economic development over there and they won't have to be we won't have to be struggling trying to figure out how we go come up with some money to pay for the utilities and the water bill and the liability insurance but we keep giving tax abatements over and over and over and over and over and over and over again i'm not saying something that was wrong with economic development downtown flint i think they're doing a great job downtown flint but when you look at people like us that's struggling trying to create opportunities on the north side of Flint and we keep on hitting roadblock at the roadblock at the roadblock, it becomes a um, problem to me to where I feel like there's nothing being um, developed over there but a whole bunch of community gardens and open green space and some hoop houses or whatever that you guys are proposing to put into your master plan. Now, you guys just recently gave $20 million to tear down houses, but we still didn't deal with the um, blight. But we keep calling it blight. So the same weeds and the high grass and all that stuff still going to be there with tear down houses that's going to create high grass. We ain't came up with a solution with that. But yet and still, we're going to give somebody 12. How many foreclosed homes that y'all done see happen when I looked at the master plan and I looked at the amount of foreclosures on the north end of Flint because people done lost their houses from back taxes. What if we would have gave them 12 years um, tax free and let them have opportunity to free up having to pay taxes to build, um, fix their plumbing or fix the roof or something that they need to fix, but they got to figure out what they need to do, whether they want to pay the light bill or the prescription or put some food on their table. It's, it's not right. And I'm not saying don't give people tax break, but if you're going to give people tax break, where did our tax break come? Only thing I know is we don't went up on the water bill. We got less services in the parks. We still paying taxes. We pay a new police millage, and where the police at? It's just not right for us that's out here trying to do things like reopen bunch school, but we can't find no money. We can't find two nickels to rub together. But yet it's still, we're going to get somebody 12 years. Who else? I, 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 how many businesses? I know we got about 10 businesses, 10 or 12 businesses in downtown Flint that we don't get tax breaks for. And if we don't cut services and don't lay people off because we, ain't got no, we can't afford no tax breaks, we ought to put a waiver on giving people tax breaks for 12 years until we um, get the city of Flint back together. That's what we should be discussing. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, can I ask Quincy? Thank you, Quincy. Go ahead, Quincy. Councilman Poplar. I see you with this beautiful design yes. in this T-shirt. Are we trying to do something at Bunch with this T-shirt? Yes, we're having a parade Wednesday. We starting at Dewey Park, and we. Is this a fundraiser that you're selling T-shirts? No, this is just for um, volunteers that's coming and um, helping put the parade together. We're going to give them um, T-shirts, 
and um, we just um, visualize an open burnt school, and we're trying to um, reach out to the public, to anybody, to any potential organizations or businesses that would like to uh, provide programming and services in Brunch School on um, Wednesday. We partner with the Flint Public Art Project. Um, they do a um, community march every fourth Wednesday. And this um, Wednesday, they will be in our neighborhood. We're going to um, display some work we've done in um, Dewey Park, and we also um, reaching out to organizations um, to see if they would like to put programming in Bunch School. And what we're going to do is give away free hot dogs and food and have a little entertainment outside of Bunch School and have different tables set up outside of different businesses that would like to um, have programming in Bunch School. And we're just trying to recruit people because it's a um, big financial burden for us to be able to open Bunch. Plus, we might have to pay some money to even purchase the building. Okay. You have a gold mine in your hand. Excuse I would me, suggest that you but get. With all due respect, we still have a public hearing open on the floor. I'm going to support you with that. It's going to only take a half a second, Councilman well, Neely. Well, I'm sorry. We have a public hearing on the floor, and let's conclude it with this public hearing, and then we can go ahead and engage in dialogue about this. But we still have business to, to conduct here. And if we could move on with the public hearing, and then we can hear from uh, Quincy, because I'm going to support Bunch Elementary. But let's go ahead and take care of our business that we have before us today. I still would suggest that you sell the t-shirts and put on there, I support opening Bunch School, and I'm a supporter. So that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. OK, is there anyone else who would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? <clears throat> is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? I ask myself, and I hope uh, those who sit on this city council and presume to uh, have uh, some responsibility for this city government, what sort of city do you want to have? What direction is this city going to go? Is it going to continue following the same path it has for far too long, which I don't think anyone with any common sense would say was the right path over probably more than a generation. There are many reasons why we're where we are, but that isn't the way we want to continue. We have to take a new direction. And not that this is about some political thing. Is I don't know where some people presume to know what my position was on tax abatements or anything else where I flip-flopped. Because I've always been consistent on this issue. And, and some people presume I'm incredibly wealthy or something because I live in a particular area of this city for 25 odd years. Well, this isn't about me. But this demagoguery, this racial polarization that goes on in this city, and, it is, and I don't know if this is a stunt because someone's running for political office themselves. That's what I say to myself. This was a, a contrived stunt. Alex? I know. I'm getting to the, the tax abatement issue. Would you issue. just focus on the tax abatement? That's what the public hearing's about. Well, unfortunately, I had to listen to a bunch of stuff that had nothing to do 